Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how easily integrated it is to use Facet WP within your Cornerstone builds. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Now, to get things started, Facet WP is an incredible way to add Ajax filtering and faceting to your site. And the nice thing about this is it can be used on both archives and on any individual page. Pages. And what we're going to look at in today's video is how to incorporate this natively within your Cornerstone build. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have Facet WP installed on our site and we'll go ahead and set up some initial facets. Now, you'll notice here I have by default the categories facet. This is set up anytime you install Facet WP. And then I've gone ahead and added a pager facet, which I have labeled a pagination here. And we'll go ahead and jump in that and we'll see that we have a short code for that called pagination. The facet type on it is pager. We're going to set this to numbers. I like to leave the inner size at two, but you can obviously adjust this as needed. The previous and the next buttons, you can customize those or delete them all together. And then things are in business. We'll come up here and we'll click save. And let's jump back over to our facets real quick here. Now, what we're going to look at today is just going to simply tap into our blog post just as an example. So let's go look at our categories here and just make sure that this is set up appropriately. Now, again, this is just the default facet that comes with facet WP. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. We have a label of categories, which means that our short code is categories facet type checkbox. Uh, I want to use this on the front end as a drop down. So let's go ahead and select drop down then it wants a data source categories is just fine but if you were using a custom post type or custom taxonomy you could grab that data source from here then we can have our default label let's call this all categories and then we can set parent terms value modifiers you can play with all of this and there's plenty of documentation for facet wp on how to set up and configure this here but i think this is looking pretty good as is so we'll go ahead and click save changes now if you haven't done this yet or as you notice here it says please re-index so we're going to go ahead and click the red button and let this quickly index through our blog category taxonomy now, with those things done, let's begin building on the front end. So let's jump into Cornerstone here. All right, so here we have the Cornerstone Builder pulled up. And first things first, what we are going to go ahead and do is create our archive. And we're going to take a look at how this works on the archive side of things first and foremost. And then we'll jump into the individual pages. So we know that we want to create a blog archive. Currently, we're just using the default. As you'll notice, we don't have any archives created here. So if I were to go out to the front end of my site and look at my blog archive here, you'll notice it's pretty messy. And normally we'd want to set something up here. So we could come into Cornerstone, we could click plus, we could create an archive layout. This archive is specifically going to be for our blog. So we'll go ahead and label it as such. Then we'll come into settings here under our conditions. We'll assign this to blog is being viewed, which I think is awesome. And then in our preview pane, which is up here in the right hand corner, we're going to make sure that we are previewing the blog page. And now we are in business. So now let's go ahead and click from scratch here and we're going to set up our blog archive. Now to speed things along in this video, I've gone ahead and pre-created what my cards are going to look like for the blog. So let's go ahead and just inside of this section here, I'm going to hold down the command or control key on my keyboard, click add element, go down to my templates, and I'm going to select cards here. And that's simply going to add a row that I created beforehand. And then that row has columns inside of it. Each column then has a div for media, a div in case there is no media, and then a div for our content. So I think this is looking pretty good right here. So then if we wanted to add pagination to this because it's an archive, we could use our standard native cornerstone pagination here. So we'd come over here, hold down the command or control key, click, we'll type in pagination, and we'll see that we have our post pagination here, which we can add in. And that's looking pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and just add a little bit of space in here. So let's go ahead and click on our row and then we'll add margin and let's just go ahead and add four M's of margin so that that pagination is spaced out a little bit there. 
then what I might do in a setup like this is click on that pagination and then set our justify to center. And I think things are looking pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and save. Let's jump back out to our blog archive here and refresh. And now things are coming together quite nicely. And you'll notice I can click on page two here and it loads up page two, the page refreshed. And then we could click page three and so on and so forth. But let's take a look at how we'd add a category facet to our archive here. So let's go ahead and jump back into our blog archive. We'll go ahead and click on our section. And then up top here, let's go ahead and add a div with global margin. We'll go ahead and add a little bit of bottom margin to that again, just to space things out. We're not too worried about design right now. And then inside of this div, we're going to go ahead and add a raw content element. We'll go ahead and drag this out here and now we can place a short code in here. So as you recall, if we jump back to facet WP here, our categories short code is simply category. So we'll go ahead and copy that short code here, jump back into the cornerstone builder and paste that directly into our raw content element. Now, within the cornerstone preview, nothing is showing here. You'll just see we have our raw content here. But if we go ahead and save and we jump back out to the front end here and we refresh, we now have a drop down. Now, this can be styled very easily with some CSS, but we'll go in here, click on this drop down, and we're going to say show us only category C. And immediately everything automatically updates. Nothing else had to be done. It works natively with cornerstone. Let's go ahead and say we want category D. We can do that here and everything works natively with cornerstone however this pagination here takes us to the direct pages as you'll notice in the url here we are on forward slash blog forward slash page three and then we have our query parameter for the filter and so those two things don't necessarily work nicely together so if we're adding something like a dynamic ajax facet for categories here then we might as well add the same thing for our pagination below. So we're going to go ahead and go back here. And instead of utilizing the standard default WordPress pagination, we're going to go ahead and delete that. And instead, we'll go ahead and add a div again down here. And inside of this one, we'll add raw content. And then inside of this raw content, we're going to do the same thing we did for categories, but we want our pagination element. So we'll copy that short code, jump back into our blog and paste that short code into the raw content. Now, again, you'll see we have raw content below and we have raw content above. We'll go ahead and save. And now let's jump back out to the front end of our blog here. You'll notice that we can filter by category. So let's go to category F here. And now we're looking at items from category F. And if we scroll down below, we now have this facet WP pagination where we can go to page three. So this is now category F and page three. You'll notice that if I set this back to all categories, we have far more than three pages showing up here. Now, what if we wanted to style something like this? Well, again, it can be done very easily with CSS. I've actually created a fun little quasi native element that we can utilize here. So to show you how something like this would work, I've pre-saved a template that is a nice baseline for customizing the design of pagination. So we would delete our raw content element here, come up to the elements library. Now, remember, I've saved this to my site specifically. So I'm going to type in facet WP pagination, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this right out into my div. And what you're going to notice is that I can select my position. So here I'm starting center. I can select my colors. I can choose my styles. I can choose my directional controls. So let's just leave it as is. We'll go ahead and save. We'll come out to the front end. Remember, this is what the default version of facet WP looks like. But when we refresh, we now have something that looks like this here. We can click page two. We can click page four, we can click previous, we can click next, and everything loads as it should. If we wanted our active color to be brighter than this, we can simply jump into the back end and we could set our active background to this orange color here, save, jump back out to the front end, refresh, and everything is loading nicely there.
So again, this is just a fun little project that I was working on here where we used parameters to create a template for our Facet WP pagination. Now, let's say we wanted to use something like this, but we wanted to use it on one of the standard pages on our site, a page that isn't an archive within WordPress. As you know, a standard page does not have the same kind of pagination feature that something like an archive has. But by utilizing this Ajax faceting control within Facet WP, we can have page navigation functionality on standard WordPress pages. So let's go ahead and open up our cornerstone documents here and just jump right out to the front end of our site. Now, as you'll notice here, this homepage is currently blank, but this is just a standard page. It is not a WordPress archive, but we could come in here. We could say we want to start from scratch. Now, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to utilize that card element that I created here. So this pulls out our blog. Now, this is where things get interesting. On this, because there is not a native looper control, right? Archives have a built-in looper provider uh, from WordPress itself. But here on a page, it's just a page. There are no looper providers by default. But we can click on our row here. We can come over to customize. We can jump down to where we have our looper providers. And because we want to utilize this with Facet WP, we are actually going to choose not the query builder, but query string. And this is very easy. You simply type in post underscore type equals. And then whatever your post type is, in my case, it's the default post type of post. And then this piece is crucial. Then we're going to add ampersand facet WP equals true. And this allows facet WP to see this query. Now to also identify for facet WP, which part of your page it needs to target, we're going to select the entire looper provider here. And we're going to add a class facet WP template. And that is it. Now what we can do here is simply add an element above. We'll do the same thing we did before where we had a raw element up top. Inside of this raw content here, we'll place our facet WP categories short code. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing below here. We'll add a div. And then on this div, we'll go ahead and just add some top margin. And then inside of this div, we'll add a raw content element again. And then inside of here, we're going to go ahead and add our pagination short codes. So this is looking pretty good. Remember, all we had to do was set up a looper provider. That looper provider utilized a custom string with facet WP equals true. And we identified which part of the page facet WP should recognize by adding the class facet WP dash template. Now we're going to go ahead and save this home page and then check out the front end of the site. Here we have our home page again, not an archive. We can filter this piece on the home page by various categories and we can come down to our pagination and we can select those and cycle through these things here. So as you can see, Cornerstone works beautifully with plugins like Facet WP to create advanced faceting and filtering and pagination on your sites. As always, I look forward to seeing what you guys create with this knowledge, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.